Okay, welcome to the workshop on creating graphics using Crawl Draw version 2020. Techniques of creating a graphic is almost same in all the versions. Only difference I found in version after 2017 was in the startup window and arrangement of tools in a toolbox. In this workshop, we will learn how to create a tactile using Crawl Draw. We will start with planning and editing of a tactile graphic. What is needed to produce a stereocopy or a micro capsule tactile? We will look at the working screen of Crawl Draw. We will look at commonly used tools in Crawl Draw to make a tactile for our Braille using students. How to configure computer to get Braille dots. Drawing lines and shapes using tools in Crawl Draw. In the last slide, we'll see Crawl Draw Part 2 webinar, what we are going to do in our next uh, webinar. When we get a document to transcribe and it has an image, we need to decide whether to make a tactile or not. Criteria for including a tactile can be based on these questions. Is this picture appropriate for a tactile graphic? If answer is yes, produce graphic. Would the information be more meaningful in text form? If answer is no, produce graphic. Does the student need the information from a map, figure, graph to participate in classroom discussion or to answer questions? If answer is yes, produce graphic. Diagrams that do not add additional necessary information than what is stated in the surrounding text may be omitted. Sometimes the information in a caption is sufficient without including the graphic. Planning the tactile graphic is a criteria, uh, sorry, is a critical step in producing a meaningful representation of a print graphic. What information will be conveyed through the tactile? Identify the content in the graphic that needs to be included. Change a 3D image to a 2D image. Many print illustrations are too complex, that is, they contain too much information. These diagrams need to be simplified. Let's look at techniques for making a meaningful graphics. Enlarge the print diagram in a way that its shape is not distorted. Complex graphics that cannot be reproduced on one page can be split over several pages. Maps and complex diagrams can be shown in two or more parts. Insert the key for a long label in a diagram. Present diagrams for young readers, one below another, instead of side by side. Let's look at some examples of print graphics and how they are simplified. Facts or data included in a tactile graphic should be selected based on the purpose of the graphic and what the reader is expected to gain from the graphic. In this picture, diagram is simplified by not drawing all the petals and stamens. In this cross section of skin diagram, the 3D image is changed to a 2D image. Only the parts labeled in print are shown. You can add a transcriber note, such as in the figure, there are many parts of the skin shown, only the parts that are labeled in print are shown below and a key for blood vessel is added.
To create a microcapsule tactile, you will need CorelDRAW software or any other drawing software. You will need swell touch paper. It comes in 11 by 11 or letter size paper. You will need a printer and image enhancer or fuser machine. Braille dots three and five won't show in Braille if we don't configure the computer. To configure your computer in CorelDRAW 2020, go to tools on your menu bar and select CorelDRAW from the options flyout. On the left side of the window, click text. Click on quick correct on the tabs on the right side window. Click on check mark to deselect all the items under quick correct window and click on OK. In CorelDRAW 2017, configure the computer by going to Tools on your menu bar and select Options. On the left side of the screen, click on the small triangle beside Workspace to show the option for the text. Under the text option, click on Quick Correct. If you don't see Quick Correct option, click on the triangle beside text. Now on the right side under quick correct, deselect all the items by clicking on small squares with check mark in them. Click on OK. Now open Corel Door 2020. Skip the signing in window. Select new from template from the get started window and click on my templates or go to file on the menu bar and click on new from template. Click on the template name PRCPI template for CorelDRAW 2017 inside my templates window. Then click on open. Click on save, sorry, click on open folder location if you have saved this template in a different location on your computer. Template saved in this path is shown in my template window. PRCVI template is created, keeping in mind the needs of the transcribers. The template has default for page size, 11 inch by 11 and half inch, swell braille font, frequently used texture, lines with arrowheads, dots for graphs and maps, etc. Open Corel Draw 2017, skip the signing in window. So it's different in how you sign in in Corel Draw 2017 and 2020. Select new from template from the get started window or go to file on the menu bar and click on new from template. On the window which opens up, click on my templates. Click on the template named PRCBI from Corel Draw inside my templates window. Click on browse. If you have saved this template in a different location on your computer. Let's look at Corel Draw screen. Title bar. It displays the title of the open document. Menu bar. Below the title bar is the menu bar. It has pull down options and commands. Standard toolbar. It has shortcuts to menu and other commands. Property bar. It tells the property of the active tool or object. As you click on various tools in the toolbar, notice the property bar changes. 
On the left side is toolbox. It has various tools for creating tactiles. Drawing window is the area bordered by the scroll bars. It includes the drawing page. Drawing page is the rectangular page inside the drawing window. It is the principal area of your work area. In this case, you can see the background, which is little yellow, is your drawing page. Document palette bar contains color swatches for the current document. At the bottom left is the document navigation. It tells the page numbers within the file. You can add pages by clicking the plus sign. Status bar tells the properties of an object, such as color, fill, and resolution. Navigation bar opens a smaller display to help you move around a drawing. On the right side is the color palette, colors for filling an object. Rulers calibrates lines with markers. Let's look at tools in the toolbox. Many of the tools in the curl draw toolbox are organized in flyouts. To access such tools, click the small black triangle in the lower right corner of a button. As you hover over each tool with the mouse, a small pop-up will display the tool name. Commonly used tool has sh shortcut keys for them, which is written beside their name. Pick tool, flyout has pick tool, freehand tool, freehand transform tool. I mostly use pick tool from this flyout. Shape edit flyout. Shape Edit Flyout has the following tools, Shape, Smooth, Smear, Twirl, Attract, Repel, Smudge, and Roughen. Commonly used tool is the Shape tool. Crop tool, Flyout. It has the following tools, Crop, Knife, Virtual Segment, Delete, and Eraser. Zoom Flyout. Zoom and Pan are the tools in this flyout. Curve flyout, it has freehand, two-point line, bezier, pen, B-spline, polyline, three-point curve, smart drawing, and live sketch tools. This is artistic tool. This is rectangle tool flyout. Rectangle and three-point rectangle tool are within this flyout. Ellipse tool flyout has ellipse and three point ellipse tools. Object flyout has various tools in it. Polygon, star, complex star, graph paper, spiral, basic shapes, arrow shapes, flowchart shapes, banner shapes, callout shapes. Let's look at more tools. Text tool flyout has text and table tool. This is dimension tool flyout. It has parallel dimension, horizontal or vertical dimension, angular dimension, segment dimensions, and three point callout. Connector tool flyout has straight line connector, right angle connector, rounded right angle connector, and edit anchor. Interactive tool flyout has drop shadow, counter, blend, distort, envelope, and extrude tools. This is transparency tool. Eyedropper tool flyout has color eyedropper and attributes eyedropper. Interactive Fill Flyout has Interactive Fill and Mesh Fill tool. This is Smart Fill tool. 
Outline pen flyout has outline pen, outline color, no outline, hairline outline, outline width, preset, and color too. Let's look at function of some of the most commonly used tools. We don't use all the tools which are shown in the previous slide. So let's look at just commonly used tools. Pick tool, it select position or transform objects. Shape edit tool, it edits a curve object or text character by manipulating nodes. You can also access this tool using F10 key on your keyboard. Crop tool, it removes the area outside the selection. Zoom tool, it changes the magnification level of the document window. You can also access this tool using Z key on your keyboard. Freehand tool, draws curves and straight line segment. You can also access this tool using F5 key on your keyboard. Artistic tool, adds artistic brush, spray, and calligraphic effects. Rectangle tool, draws rectangle and squares. You can also access this tool using F6 key on your keyboard. Ellipse tool, draws circles and ovals. You can also access this tool using F7 key on your keyboard. Shape tool, draws polygons, basic shapes, spirals, etc. Text tool, it adds and edit paragraph and artistic text. You can also access this tool using F8 key on your keyboard. Parallel dimension tool, it draws slanted dimension lines. Connector tool, draws a line to connect two objects. Interactive tool flyout. It has various tools. I only use blend tool from this flyout. Transparency tool. It partially reveal image areas underneath the object. Color eyedrop tool. It sample colors and apply them to objects. Interactive fill tool. Apply the current fill to an object. Smart fill tool, it creates objects from overlapping areas and apply a fill to those area. This plus sign adds frequently used tools or remove unused tools from the toolbox. You can add or remove the tools from the toolbox according to your need so that it's easy to navigate. Let's look at how to add or remove the unused tools in a toolbox. Click on the plus sign. On the pop-up window, select or deselect the tools you use most commonly. The tools will have only the tools you selected. So my toolbox looks small like the one shown on the right side. Let's look at how to do the page layout. The page property bar lets you adjust page settings such as, such as page size, dimensions, orientation, units of measures, etc. To access the page property bar, click the pick tool and click a blank space in the drawing window. Choose a preset page size from the page size list box on the property bar. Specify a custom page width and height in the page dimension boxes. Set the page orientation to landscape or portrait. Click the current page button to apply the page size only to the current page 
or you can change size, uh, size of the pages in all the pages of your document. Choose a unit of measure from the drawing unit list box. Let's look at various tools used for drawing lines. The drawing tool from the curve flyout lets you draw curved and straight lines. The line segment are connected by nodes, which are depicted as small squares. The freehand and polyline tools let you draw freehand line as if you were sketching on a sketch pad. The new live sketch tool offers the simplicity and speed of freehand sketching. The Bezier and Pen tools let you draw line one segment at a time by placing each node with precision and controlling the shape of each curved segment. The B spline tool lets you create smooth curves with fewer nodes than curves drawn by using freehand paths. To draw a line using Bezier tool, select Bezier tool from the toolbox. Left click on the drawing page where you want to start the line and left click again on the page where you want the line to end. You can draw a straight line by holding on the control key and repeating the process mentioned above. To change the properties of the drawn line, select the pick tool from the toolbox. Select the drawn line. On the property bar, change the line size, width, line style, or line ends. On the property bar, line size can be changed from here. Line width or thickness can be changed from here. Line style can be changed from here. From the drop down menu arrow, you can select dashed, dotted, and various other options. Line ends can be changed from here. Tools in the toolbox remain active until you return to the pick tool. To return to the pick tool after using the tool, Tap the space bar or use the mouse to click on the pick tool. To return to the pick tool from the text tool, press and hold the control key as you tap the space bar. Let's look at how to change a straight line to a curved line. Select Bezier tool from the toolbox and draw a straight line by holding on the control key. Click on the shape tool. Notice the line changes to blue color. Click on the line. On the property bar, select curve, uh, sorry, select convert line to curve line. Two small arrow appear on the line. Click on the middle of the line and drag the line upward to make a curve upward curve or drag the line downward to make a downward curve. So in this diagram, you can see the start node and there's end node and there's control handles and control point. By holding and dragging the control point with the mouse, the shape and length of the curve can be changed. To draw a rectangle, 
click on the rectangle tool on the toolbox with the mouse. Bring the mouse anywhere onto the drawing window. Notice the mouse cursor becomes a plus with the rectangle shape. Click and drag the mouse in any direction. Notice how the rectangle is drawn as you drag the mouse. Release the mouse button. To draw a square, hold the control key down and draw as per the above instruction. Notice how the control key constrains the shape to a perfect square. Release the mouse button before releasing the control key. You can change the properties of an object drawn, drawn by making changes in the property bar. Let's look at how to draw a circle or an oval. Click on the ellipse tool on the toolbar with the mouse. On the property bar, click on the ellipse to make an oval shape. Bring the mouse anywhere onto the drawing window. Notice the mouse cursor become plus with the circle. Click and drag the mouse in any direction. Notice how an oval is drawn as you draw the mouse. Release the mouse button. To draw a circle, hold the control key down and draw as per the above instructions. Notice how the control key constrains the shape to a perfect circle. Release the mouse button before releasing the control key. You can change the properties of the circle drawn by making changes in the property bar. Let's see how to make a pie shape and an arc. Click on the ellipse tool on the toolbox with the mouse. On the property bar, click on the pie to make a pie shape. On the property bar, click on the arc to make an arc. With the shape tool, drag the nodes to get the desired pie shape or an arc. Pie shape and arc can also be created by moving the nodes of a circle. To create an arc, drag the nodes while keeping the pointer outside the circle. Keeping the pointer inside the circle will create a pie shape. To draw a polygon, click on the polygon tool on the toolbox with the mouse. Set the number of points on the sides for the polygon on the property bar. Bring the mouse anywhere onto the drawing window. Notice the mouse cursor becomes plus and polygon shape. Click and drag the mouse in any direction. Notice how the polygon is drawn as you drag the mouse. Release the mouse button. To draw a perfect polygon, hold the control key down and draw as per above instructions. Notice how the control key constrains the shape to a perfect polygon. Release the mouse button before releasing the control key. Draw a right triangle parallelogram, etc. by selecting common shape tool from the toolbox. Let's look at how to fill a texture. Draw an enclosed shape. Click on the 40% black from the color palette to get a gray fill. 
Not all fills in coral draw prints well on swell paper. So we have selected fills on the template which we use. To get texture fill, select the texture from the PRCVI template, hold on the texture with right side of the mouse, drag and bring the texture to the object and release the mouse. Select copy fill here from the drop down menu. Object will get filled with the desired texture. Make a grid using graph paper tool. Select graph paper tool from object flyout. On the property bar, select the number of columns and rows to appear in a new grid. On the property bar, select the outline width and line type for the grid. Drag the mouse on the drawing page and make a grid. Click on the text tool on the toolbar or press F8 to write text on a drawing page. To change the font type and font size, go to the property bar and make changes. Since we are using a template, swell braille font and 24 point font size will be the default setting. We need to use ASCII code to get contracted Braille. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Here is a list of ASCII code and its Braille equivalent. For example, exclamation mark will give contraction for the crosshatch on the keyboard will Braille numeric indicator and so on. You can also copy Braille from Duxbury and paste on the drawing page, which might be easier for new transcribers. Now let's look at the next topic we will cover in our second webinar on Corel Draw. In our second webinar on Corel Draw, we will show you the magic of creating graphs, bar charts, clocks, etc., with the flick of a button using tactile macros. Tactile macros brings consistency and speed in production of Braille tactiles. In this webinar, samples were taken from Guidelines and Standards for Tactile Graphics 2010. You can access this document from our website at prcvi.org. Now let's open CrawlDraw 2020 and see some of the topics we covered in this webinar. I'm going to share my crawl draw now. There you go. So I have opened crawl draw 2020. So as I said, to get started, we will click on get started. We will click on new from templates. I have so many templates here, but I will go to my templates under all templates and select my PRCVI template. I'll double click on the template. You will see this message. Just click OK on the screen. So this is our PRCVI template. It has swell braille as your default uh, font, and it has some of the textures which we use commonly. Uh, now let's look at how to configure your computer 
in 2020, you will go to window, no, sorry, you will go to tools, go to options and go to Corel Draw. And then on the left side here, go to text, go to quick correct, and uncheck everything on this window and click OK. OK. And to minimize your items on your toolbox, click this plus sign. And this window is open up. There's so many items. You can scroll down and up and uncheck whatever you don't want in this toolbox. You can also reset your toolbar or customize it. Okay, now let's have some fun. Let's draw a straight line. To draw a straight line, I'll go to my Bezier tool. That's my favorite tool. I'll click to the Bezier tool. I will click on the drawing page. I'm doing left click because I want to draw a straight line. I'm holding on to the control key on my keyboard and clicking on the page and releasing my mouse. So you see a straight line is drawn. I'm going to my zoom tool to zoom in to bring the page in front of me here closer. One more time so I can see my line clearly. I will go to my pick, I will select my line, sorry, I will go to my pick tool and my line is selected. Now on the property bar, I can go and change the width of my line. This line is 1.5. I would like to make it to three point, let's say. And let's say I want to make it a dotted line. So I will go under line style and select any of the options here. So let's select this. So now you have a dashed line. If you want to have arrows on the other sides, you can go here and select the arrows you want on the sides. So now we have a line with two arrowheads. Now, if I want to add a page, I will click on the plus sign here at the bottom where it says page one, and I will add a page. Now let's draw a straight line again. I'm going to my Bezier tool. I'm clicking on the drawing page and holding on to control key, I'm drawing a straight line and releasing the mouse. Now I want to make this line to a curve line. To do that, I will go to my shape tool. The line becomes blue. Now I will click on the line. Now I will go up on the property bar and select convert to curve. Now you see there are small arrows here in between the lines. I will click in between these small arrows and I will drag with my mouse upward to make it an upward curve. Okay, if I want to make a downward curve, I will bring it down like this. 
with my mouse and release. If I want to change the shape of this arc, I will click on the line. I will click on this very end. When I click on these very end points, you can see there's these control lines which opens up. With these control points, I can drag and make any shape I want. Let's say if I want to make this upward, this will become like this. Cool. Now I can bring it downward. So you can control the shape by holding on to these control arrows. Okay. And again, if I want to change the line width, I will go to my pick tool. Property bar changes. And I will make this line to point or three point. Okay, now I'll add another page. Let's draw a circle. To draw a circle, go to this ellipse tool. Click on it and select ellipse. On the property bar, select ellipse. Now on the drawing page, I will just click and drag my mouse. I'm not making a perfect circle here. I'm just making a circle oval. And release your mouse. Again, click on the page drag the mouse and release the button. Okay. To make a perfect circle, hold down the control key and drag your mouse. There, this is your perfect circle now. Now go to pick tool you can change the properties of the circle. You can make it three point. You can make it a dashed dotted circle. Okay. So this is how we change the properties of an object. Now let's look at how to make an arc. Again, go to ellipse tool and select an arc. Again, click on the drawing page and drag how big you want an arc and release the mouse. You can also change the shape of the arc go to shape tool and holding from the end you can make the shape changed but it will turn into a pie but we want an arc to do that we will go back and click on arc okay to make a pie select pie sorry it changed the same object I wanted to make a new one. Okay, so for that, I have to go back to pick tool and get out of this. Or click anywhere on the drawing page. Now I will go to ellipse, go to pie, select pie, and draw a pie. If I want to change the shape of the pie, I will go to shape tool and drag from this point anywhere. As I'm dragging, you can see a dotted blue line is coming up. So if I want to make it this shape, I will 
go till here and then release the mouse. Again, if you want to change the size of the line width, you can go and change it here. And if you want to make it dashed, you can go here and make it a dotted line. Okay. Or this. Okay. Now let's look at the polygon shape. Click on polygon shape. And if you want polygon of five sides, select five. If you want it six sides, you can make it six. You can make seven, however sides you want. And click on the drawing page and drag with the mouse. And release the mouse. You can change the size. Two point. Again, you can make it dot, dot it, dotted. You can make it dotted or dashed. To make a perfect polygon, you go and select polygon. Now this time, hold it the control key down and drag the mouse. As you see, because I have held the control key down, I'm making a perfect polygon and release the mouse. Okay. To draw common shapes, in the polygon itself, go and select common shapes here. On the property bar, I have selected triangle, right triangle. So I will select right triangle from the options here and click on my drawing page and drag and make a right triangle. Again, you can go and choose the line width or line style. Okay. Now to get out of this, I will go back to pick tool or press space bar to get out of this. It's not good. Or on the click on a drawing page. Three of the options you can choose to get out of the uh, tool. Now we can go again to the common shapes tool and select parallelogram. And again, drag and make a parallelogram. Okay. Now let's go and make an, did I show rectangle? No, okay. So I'll go and show you how to make a rectangle. For that, go to rectangle tool, click rectangle, click on your drawing page and drag and make a rectangle. Release the mouse. To make a square, click on rectangle tool Holding down the control key, click on the drawing page and drag and release your mouse. You can change the properties of your square or rectangle on the property bar. Okay. Now, if I have to fill this object, I will go and do my pick tool select this object or rectangle and go to my color palette and give it 40% black or it will be gray actually. So it will be gray, 40% black is gray. Okay, so let's see how to do fill from our template. So if I made a square, 
So let's make a square. And I want to fill it up with this texture. So I will go to pick tool. I will click on my texture. Click on the right side of the mouse. Bring it to the area where you want it felt and release your mouse. You will see these options come up. So select copy fill here and the texture is filled. Okay, I can show you one more time with the circle. Let's draw a circle, ellipse tool, circle selected from the property bar, holding down the mouse, pressing down control key, make a circle. And I want to fill it up. With the texture, I'll go to pick tool to get out of my uh, circle tool. And now I will go and fill it up with this texture. I will click on it, right click, bring it to the object, release the mouse, copy, fill here, select. And you have a filled object. Now, let's look at um, how to add a label. To add a text, so you can select text tool. And let's say I want to label this rectangle A. So I'm pressing a comma on the keyboard and I'm pressing A on my keyboard. So this is our capital A. This is called ASCII code. You have, because our template has 12 braille font and 24 point, you don't have to go and select the font from the options of the font. And you don't have to even select the 24 point because we want 24 point for our labels for uh, tactiles. So you don't have to make any changes here, okay? Okay, what other thing I should show? Okay, let's say if you have a label within this texture shape. So what I'll do is I'll make another square on top of it. So I'll make a square. And I'll fill it with white. There you go. Can you see it? I will zoom it in. So I have a fill for the label. But I don't want this label, this square to have any uh, boundaries. So I will go up and make my line strength to zero. So I'll select none. Now I will add my label, which I had created here and move it to the center by holding on the mouse and releasing it here. But as you see, because I had written text first and I had drawn my white square after, so my um, text has gone below the white. To bring this up, I will do control page up and it brings my label up, okay? You can do it this way, or if you forget the shortcut, you can always go to uh, select your object first and then go to object, and go to order and to bring it front of the page. It's grayed out right now because it is at the front of the page. So whenever we are drawing anything, so the first layer, whatever you draw first becomes your first layer, whatever you draw second becomes your second layer, third layer, that's how it goes. So you're drawing layer 
above layers, okay? But to move your objects above and below, you can go to object and go to order and select to the back of the layer or to the back of the page, okay? You can show you one more time. Let's say I want this circle because I had drawn this uh, second. So this will come on top of this triangle, sorry, rectangle, okay? If I want it below, so I will click this, go to object, order to the back of the page. That will bring it below, all right? So this is how we move different layers in a drawing page. We are open for questions now. Uh, Jen, do uh, you yeah, have any I questions? We had a few in the chat, so let me just scroll back here. Um, there's a question about uh, if the template is available and where to get it. Uh, yeah, um, I will post, uh, I will send all the files needed to all the participants after the workshop. You have to get it from uh, either me, uh, Marjorie, or from Gret, from PRCBI. Um, there's a question as well about if, if there'll be a copy of these slides uh, with the recording. Uh, yes, we will post this out. Yeah, we'll send so, it out to all yeah, the participants. We'll send yeah. it with the uh, recording. Yeah. Uh, there was a question about uh, dot five in ASCII is, but that got answered, it's a quotation mark. Mm -hmm. um, can you copy and paste a shape that you've created? Yes, you can copy and paste. Like if I have drawn, it's the same commands, you control C and then control V. What it does it, it will paste on top of the object. So you need to move it. So I have done copy and I've done pasted it. Then I will go to my pick tool and move it. Okay. Uh, great. And there's a question about what is the best way to make a wavy line? Uh, if it's, uh, you can always, like if you're tracing, you can also use like freehand, use freehand and make a line. Is that what you mean? So this is freehand drawing. And you can always go and make it clean by going to the shape tool and like, you know, you can make it like if you're tracing. You can use the handles to make the shape perfect according to your needs. Uh, there's a question here of whether Corel 2018 is the same as 2022. Uh, it's tools are the same. It might be some of the tools might be somewhere in the toolbox uh, and the starting up looks different. Other than that, the way the program works is same. Hey, Seema and Jen, it's Adam. Hi. 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 Seema, awesome. I mean, obviously you're just down the hall from me, so I'm somewhat biased, but amazing job. Thank you so much. Um, I just wonder, did we go all the way back to address the questions from the beginning? Uh, let me just quickly scroll back. I did, uh, let's see. I think I did get everything. Okay. Like, did we talk about, and I apologize, I, I missed a little bit, but I've just popped back in now. Um, like, did we talk about templates and where those are available and things like that? Yes, we did. Fabulous. Okay. Thank you. I uh, read there... another question here. It says, do you have any practice suggestions? Mm -hmm. I will just say open curl draw and click, click, click with mouse and use all the tools you can. <laughs> Okay, I also see a question from Sandy there. Uh, objects can be moved forward and backwards. Does Corel Draw offers offer a layers palette like an Illustrator? Uh, I don't know much about Illustrator, so I don't know uh, what your question really means. But it, um, I don't know what you mean by layers palette. I, oh, it might. Do you mean that it shows? where your object stands? Is it layer one or layer two? Is that what you want to know? So if I click on the layer on an object, at the bottom it says rectangle on layer one. 
And if I click on the second rectangle, it still says rectangle on layer one. So I don't know about that. Although it should be layer two. We've yeah. had a couple more questions come in. Uh, someone's asking about the cost of Corel. The cost of Corel is I think 99 or 110 if you get it from, uh, from for an education price, right? I'm not sure about that now. It used to be 99 if you ask for an educational price. And then there's a couple questions about, can you uh, demo some things? So uh, someone would like you to demo uh, how oh. to fill a box again. Okay, all right, okay, I can do that, sure. So, yeah, someone's confirming, yeah, 98 for educational version. Okay, okay, let's fill a object again. So let's say I want to make a rectangle. I'll click on the rectangle tool, click on my drawing page and drag and release my mouse. So if you're thinking about using a texture from this palette here from our textures, then go to pick tool and select the texture, right click on the texture and bring it to the objects you want to fill in and release the mouse a new window will open up and just select copy fill here and click on it and the texture is fill. If you want to fill using the color palette, draw an object and click on any of the color you want. It will do the filling. But for Braille, we don't use any colors. We use grayscale. So we use 40% black. That's how we do the filling. Um, there's a question here about, can you copy and paste images or objects from Google or Word into Corel? Yes, you. I don't know about Google, but I know you can do from any PDF file or a Word file. You can cut and paste. And uh, Marjorie is saying that, yes, you can do from Google too. And I actually think that in part addresses Niels's question around if a teacher handed a diagram to be made into a tactile, can you show the steps to convert it? I think that, so Seema, I'll defer to you here, but it sounds like the ability to pull in from Word or Google would be useful in that scenario. Yeah, sure. Um, but that would be, but if I'm, if I'm reading Niels, Niels's question correctly, this is more of a, of a, of a scanning and markup issue than it is a Corel issue. Correct? That's like, true. Yeah, that's true. If you get a, a handout from a teacher, you scan that document and you just copy the picture and uh, from the, let's say if it's a Word document, then copy it there from the Word and bring it to Corel and then you can do the tracing around the uh, object. Uh, can you show a sample of that? I don't have okay. yeah. Is that something if we wanted to, demo, to do a demo, we could do next time, Seema? Yes, that's what we, I'll prepare for next time. Great. Because for now, for that thing to show, I have to like um, screen, you know, sharing the screen is so challenging. Mm -hmm. I have to open a Word document, so then I have to share the Word document. Oh, it's a whole And then thing. I have to yeah. copy yeah. from there, then I have to stop sharing, then I have to oh, open yeah. Curl Draw. So that's why I'm a little hesitant if yeah. that might work or not. Well, and, and um, if anyone's interested in that, or if, if, if um, Niels, if you're not able to join us, we'll, we're recording everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there's another question here about, is there any type of pen or stylus tool you can use to draw or just the mouse? So oh, I'm not the... sure if that's about the, um, I, I'm not sure if that's about, you know, you can get these graphics tablets you can draw on. Yeah, yeah, for Corel Draw, you need to have a mouse, I think. I don't, I have not used tablet, uh, Corel Draw in a tablet. So I don't know if that will work. I have no idea about that. Someone asked about triangle with angle measurements. Oh, yeah, that's in a, uh, about the triangle with angle measurements. I'm going to show in the next workshop using macros. Right. 
And then Terrace just shared that um, they use Adobe to snapshot an image and insert into Corel and then draw over it, which I think is that, yeah, that's, exactly that's how we describing. do it too. Yeah, yeah, that's how we do it too. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, there's a question: Can your template be used with TN macros? Yes, we we use template with our TN macros. Just uh, there's a two questions came in at the same time. One of them I'm going to ask ask ask. One is for Seema, one I think is for Jen and I, just in terms of um, managing the recording. Um, Seema, can objects be copy and pasted into Corel? And I believe the answer is yes. Yes, okay. yeah. And then Bob asks, can these last questions be added to the next demo? Um, and yes, there, we, we, will, we will definitely make sure that things like the, um, the triangle with ang uh, angle measurements um, and um, the copy and pasting images into Corel, we can certainly reflect in the next one. I'm looking at a question from Sue Patterson. She's saying, when a drawing is finished, I assume you copy it into a PF paper. That's correct. When the drawing is finished, you print it on a PF paper, and then you uh, that paper goes through a PF machine. I think Bob is saying there were references to tools we don't know much about. So actually I have covered the most commonly tools which we use in Corel Draw. We don't use all the tools in the toolbox. So that's why I just show you limited one which we use. We, I don't know all the tools in the toolbar. It's that basic common one we use in uh, Corel Draw for making braille tactiles. That's the tools I talked about. I mean. It's we're we're always delighted when Seema can share her expertise with us, and we're glad that you know you all could be here with us as well. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I feel, it, am I going really slow, or that's my always the worry. I don't want people getting bored here. <laughs> well, I don't think there's a danger of that. Um, <laughs> Jen, I'll pass it over to you to uh, to wind us down. Sure. Well, thank you so much, team. I, I learned a, a lot um, as someone who's not super experienced with Corel. So um, I think this was great. I think the pace was perfect. And um, just a reminder to everyone that the second part of the workshop on May 31st will be emailed out if you've registered. And we will also email um, the recording when available, as well as a copy of the slides. So... Yeah, thank you everyone. To seeing everyone on the 31st. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>